When Tom was little, it was back in the day when the ski movies only came out once a year on a DVD, and he would sit there and wait for those to come. I do think that's how Tom learned all his tricks. He would watch the movies over and over again, and when he'd get down on the hill, the kids would try to do it, and they'd have their little camcorders out there, and then they'd come back and spend the next three hours watching those things. It used to be X Games and October, you know, when the movies dropped, that you saw free skiing. I mean, that's how I grew up, and that was what free skiing was. So when it came around to the autumn, to the fall, and you saw what these guys have been up to all year long, your idols and what everyone's been doing, it was actually mind-blowing. When you could only see it once in the year, Tom definitely had passion. He was an ordinary kid with super ordinary determination. I give full credit to Patty. She, she knew long before that uh, he was gonna be great at whatever he pursued. But when did I know? I would say the super unknown. That told me that he was gonna be recognized by the world, yes. I remember, we all remember the first time we saw Tom Wallace skiing. It was on YouTube. I remember he was wearing big, baggy brown pants and he was doing all sorts of crazy stuff on these tiny little rails. I'll never forget that. Somebody actually took me aside and was like, you need to see this guy ski. There was the comp guys and then there was the big film companies. Tom was doing just as cool of stuff. It was like, it bridged this gap between, you know, the skier kid and the pro. And obviously, you know, Tom, later became a super pro, but then he was just another one of us. The first year in Utah was the most progressive, most fun ski season of my entire life by far, especially with the Super Unknown video. The feedback from kids across the internet was like, crazy. Kids were calling me the best skier ever. Or like, this guy is insane. This is the best. And it was the biggest boost of confidence. I was like, wow, I could maybe be a pro skier. I should keep trying at this. These kids are inspired by me. Like, I want to try harder to impress more people, to inspire more people. And the feedback from those first videos is really what made me the skier I am today. As far as bringing new stuff to the game is concerned, that is the dream. That's what we do, and that's action sports, that's free sports. It's the essence of it. So seeing Wallace when he first came in and giving the big dogs a massive run for their money, that was huge, just showing everybody what's possible. When Tom was a child, X Games was the thing, okay? He'd just walked, watched 13 hours of X Games. You know, it was the middle of the night back then, and he recorded it all. And he said, you know, I'm gonna be in that someday. He said to me, I can do everything they're doing, and I'm gonna do it. I said, okay. 
Dash on Fire, our number one qualifier. Here goes Tom Wallish. And we talk about composure. Look at that. 450 off. That was perfect up top. Tom Wallish is on fire right now. And look at the perfection of Tom Wallish and the body control. Look at the landing. Oh, yeah, no big deal. I remember vividly being in the competition field with Tom. Wallace was that guy that the skier skier that everybody was rooting for. You know, obviously they wanted to win themselves, but if they weren't gonna, they wanted Wallace too. Tom Wallace has won every major ski slope style competition there is. That feature has been for a lot of these athletes. Now Tom can just relax a little bit. The pig switch left double ten, and that was as we call a banger run. Classic Tom. Videos have been viewed. The athletes are standing by and the judges are here discussing and deliberating their favorite films, picking things apart based on four categories. I am so happy that Real Ski is in X Games now, including those guys that said, I don't want to be doing competition. I don't want to be judged on my one run right now on this day. I want to go out there and create this content that I'm proud of. That's, that's amazing. I, I, I couldn't agree more. Six skiers. Six video parts, one X Games gold medal. Pretty much as soon as the real ski event came into play, I realized that like I didn't want to do regular competitions anymore. I didn't want to compete in slope style. I didn't want to be at the top of one of those courses in bad weather about to do crazy trick just because I had to do it then. got to be mistake free. Oh, that, no. that threw him off. He knew it. Once you go down, Coming back to my roots and like team up with one of your best friends, a filmmaker, and put together a video is like what I grew up doing and what I love in skiing the most, creating something cool that will inspire other people to want to ski. When you film, you compete against yourself. Like you're not trying to beat anybody but your part the previous year. So this added in a different element of trying to make a better edit than somebody else or movie part than somebody else. Um, everybody, they'll try and tell you that they're not competitive, but they're competitive. Injuries, no matter what scale, if they're small things that stay with you season after season, that's just awful. Being shut down for a huge period of time, that's awful as well. Injuries are part and parcel of what we do. It's, it's in the job description. You know you're gonna do it. You can't push the boundaries without you know, taking some falls. There's nothing that can get you ready for suddenly having all, all of that taken away. Skiing is the dream, we want to do it all the time. You finally make it to the point where you want to be and you get it all shut down for a period of time. That sucks and it's a huge mental game. He did uh, have a concussion, I think was his first injury. He's broke his collarbone a number of times. Last year, unfortunately, I tore my right ACL. I had to miss skiing for eight months. I didn't touch or ride a pair of skis, which for me has been the longest break I've ever had since basically I started skiing. And it was tough. It's so hard for me as a guy who loves skiing so much to kind of like watch it and see everybody on Instagram and on social, having fun, skiing with their friends. I love how much talent there is and how much easier it is for a kid like me on the East Coast to get noticed for their skiing, where I could put my videos kind of on the internet as a kid, but like nowadays, if, if you're a good skier and you're putting up really good Instagram videos every day, like you might become a pro skier just off of that. It's, 
it's so cool coming back and getting back on skis after an injury like this because you do all the time and you're off snow so much and you do all the gym work you're like am I still gonna be able to do it but it all comes back to you and it takes a while but like every day I do a different trick that I know I can do but when you do it you're like oh wow I didn't I didn't lose it and that feeling it's like it's kind of like doing it for the first time all over again. Tom loves the sport, there's no doubt. I considered Tom an athlete first. That has always been his passion, but I think even from a young age, Tom had decided that that was gonna be a career, and he certainly made it one. The first American girl ever to win a gold medal here at Slope South. How does this feel? Do I consider Wallace to be one of those greats that came in, changed the game? Absolutely. Through times, there's skiers that their, their names still live on, like, and they stay involved, and it's because of the impact that they made, and Tom is definitely that skier for my generation.